Okay, Michael from First Aid Oz talking about hyperthermia, not to be confused with hypothermia, often people mix them up. Hyperthermia is exposed to heat, okay, which causes an increase in your body's core temperature. So obviously if you're out there exercising in the sun or doing something where your body is generating heat naturally and you're exposed to the heat, that's going to accelerate your core temperature increasing. Okay, Now your core temperature sits at a little over 37 degrees and you don't want that to climb too much further than that. Okay, Obviously in, in summer months and in certain activities there is that increased risk. So things that we do, uh, we wear light uh, clothing which helps uh, reflect the heat. Okay, We don't spend too much time out in the heat exposed, we, we break up that time. Um, we have cool fluids to drink. We don't expose too much of our skin to hot temperatures for too long. So, so wear clothing which covers uh, most of your body. Of course, to protect our skin and so forth, you know, using sunscreen uh, of the appropriate strength. I mean, we, we cover a little bit in our section on burns. Uh, but in terms of body temperature, some of the things you'll notice when you, when you start to overheat. One is that your skin will become flush, it will become very uh, pink or red. And what that is, is the blood rushing to the surface of the skin. Uh, your blood vessels would dilate, which, which enables the blood flow more easily. And the heat will transmit from your body. And you know, you'll find when you're exercising, if you were to place your hand just close to your face, you'll feel heat radiate off your face. You know, and that's the, the body's way of heat escaping. Now, different people perspire different amounts. And the whole purpose of perspiration is to provide a cooling effect. So when the wind blows on your sweat, if you like, it helps keep the skin cool. One thing you need to consider though, particularly if, if dehydration is involved, that the person may stop sweating. Now, if the person stops sweating or doesn't sweat um, much or at all, then the rate of hypothermia um, can be faster, okay? Because that they lose that cooling effect of the sweat, okay? But of course, the best way to prevent overheating is get out of the heat, okay? So get yourself in a shady spot. If it's shady and a nice breeze, that's even better. Uh, wet your skin so that that breeze can, can create a cooling effect. Um, get the person out into a, a room or in a shelter. If you've got a fan, put a fan on and sit in front of the fan. If you can uh, use a moist cloth or a damp cloth, um, nice and cool behind the back of the head, in the armpits. Um, I would go so far as to say between the legs, but you might want to do that one yourself. Um, they're key areas of the body uh, where you can cool the body down quite quickly. Um, and then, like I said, if you, if you keep the skin nice and moist, airflow from a fan, okay, that will help gradually um, return your body temperature back to where it should be. Cool drinks, okay, don't, don't take an ice bath. We don't want a sudden uh, shock on the body, which can cause cardiac arrest. Okay, we don't jump in an ice bath, we don't throw ice all over the person, just nice cool drink, uh, nice cool uh, cloths, uh, not necessarily an ice pack, and uh, like I said, in those key parts of the body. All right, uh, but the main thing is get out of the heat. Don't continue to do the things which are causing you to overheat in the first place. Prolonged exposure to heat, and particularly if combined with exercise, will uh, cause an acceleration in the hypothermia. Thank you.